welcome to the BFI, BFA UI update. We start leveling in a few hours. Sorry it's taking so long, but this has been a massive undertaking uh, to get this done. Never mind, many sleepless nights, but we got there and got it done. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to take you through the process of installing it. If you're good with installing a UI and you did one last time, sure, you can skip ahead, click the timer. If you make a mistake, come back to this one. If you're not sure about how to install a UI, I'm going to make it as easy as humanly possible. Down below the video, you'll see a Dropbox link in order to download the RAD file uh, that you need to unpack that will contain an interface and a WTF folder. Uh, unpack them somewhere. Windows will typically do it for you, but you might have to download WinRAR or something like that to unpack it. Uh, it just makes it smaller in order for you guys to have an easier download time. Then what you want to do is save them somewhere. So make a folder called like Preach UI or something like that and stick them in there. Then go into your World of Warcraft folder like I am here. And then what you're going to do is back up yours. Just in case anything goes wrong, just click these two, copy them, and paste them somewhere. So if something goes wrong, you can just put them back in, and you still got your UI that you're using right now. Okay, now, because I'm ballsy, I'm just going to delete mine. Uh, so what you should end up with is a folder in your World of Warcraft folder that looks exactly like this, okay? It has nothing else in it. So then what we're going to do to solve the biggest issue that we had uh, with people installing my UI last time is we're going to log into WoW. We're going to just log in. So we've got an empty folder in our World of Warcraft folder. We're going to log in. And it will be like this is the first time you've ever played WoW. As you see, you get the cutscene. We get some very tedious music. Sorry about that. <sighs> And if we log into a character, <laughs> I have a character boost. How exciting for me to have a character boost to go along with this. Uh, very, very nice. And as we log in here, you'll see this is a completely blank UI. There's nothing here. Let's deactivate sound. Uh, you can see there's nothing here. This is the basic World of Warcraft UI. Okay, so let's exit the game. Good. And now you can see the game will have actually created an interface in WTF folder because it's your first time logging in while wow, automatically generates these folders. Uh, so what we're going to do next, actually, is copy in mine. So you can see they're here. I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to paste them in here. So what we're doing now is we're copying all the add-ons you're going to be using and the settings you're going to use. Now, this is the good point to point out we have made significant changes from my Legion UI. This is why it's taken so long. Like I said, this has been a huge undertaking. It's taken something like 10 or 12 times longer to make this, but you'll see the benefits in a minute. Certainly, if you installed my last UI, uh, you'll see the benefits of it. So because it already created these interface and WTF folders, it's saying, hey, you've already got these things. Do you want? What do you want to do? We're going to replace them. Okay. Now, the reason I want you guys to do this if you've never installed a UI before is for this next step. We're going to go into the WTF folder and you'll have these three things. We're going to go into accounts. And now you can see there's two things here. There's a folder called account name and then there's a folder that actually has my account name because we just logged in and it automatically generated it, right? This is where people came unstuck. If you have an old ass World of Warcraft account like I do, my account name is actually the name. Now, you might be wondering why it's called that. This was an account uh, I made for my wife a long time ago, and there's, there's a story behind it. But if you have a newer World of Warcraft account, this will be a series of numbers. But you want to copy that. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename, okay? And then we're going to copy it, Control C. And then we're going to delete that folder. We don't want that one. Then we're going to click on the account name one, and we're going to rename that, and we're going to paste. Okay, this is where people always got unstuck with, with changing this account name to the correct one. So if you log in, it will generate it for you, so you don't need to mess around. You only have the two options. We're going to go into the account, and you can see there's a folder called Realm Name. So what we're going to do is rename that to your realm. So this would be Ragnaros for me. Whatever your main realm is, where you can set up your characters, and from there, it will automatically do the rest of it. And that's it. That's it. Everything's in there that you need. So now we're going to log in. Okay. I'm going to set this up. So we're going to make a brand new character as if uh, as if it was one of your characters. No different whatsoever. Log into the game. Let's create a new character. Uh, let's make a gnome. And we'll call it Breach UI BFA. Luckily, no one has taken that name. How fantastic. Let's log into our little gnome here. So the first thing we're going to have here is LVI is going to prompt us to set some stuff up. We're actually going to click the continue and finish, although we're not going to use those settings, just so this prompt doesn't pop up again. 
every now and again it will pop up again so we're going to click here see this continue button we're going to continue through it spam it click finished it's going to do a reload because it's it's like oh you've you've picked some settings well no not really but i just want you to get out of my face uh shadow and light's going to do the same thing often people ask me how do you get this cool background on your character frame that's what it is it's the lvi shadow and light i'm going to click finished on that okay good so we do have something here that i'll talk about shortly which is going to be great for bfa leveling i'm going to disable these tool tips and here's our character so our first step in configuring this is going to press the escape key click lvy come down here to profiles you can see it's all the way down here profiles and we'll get a drop down menu here you see this little arrow we're going to drop this down we're going to change it to preach bfa bump done close that the next thing we're going to do is forward slash big wigs because that's my uh, boss add-ons if you use deadly boss mods that's entirely up to you uh, i'm going to come down to profiles i'm going to drop it down and i'm going to click preach and we're done I'm not even joking. <laughs> We're done. Let's reload the UI to make sure everything slash reload to make sure everything is comfy and, and wow is happy and all that kind of stuff. But that is it. You are done in terms of configuration for preset things. Now, one of the biggest changes uh, that we've made here. Now you now you're installed and now you're good to go. So one of the biggest changes we made here was we removed tell me when, which was the old spell notification and countdown timers, and we transferred everything to week auras. So that is slash w a to open it. And the this comes with some advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantages it takes a huge amount of time to set this up the way we want it to be. Luckily, I've done that bit. The advantages though are numerous. They are numerous. Firstly, it auto detects the spec of the character and the race of your character that you are playing. And it automatically goes, oh, you're playing a warlock? Cool. You're playing demonology. Awesome. I've loaded all the demonology warlock stuff you need. So you guys don't have to do like on my previous UI, which was go through, tell me when, find the correct character and spec, and then load that in and copy it over and all that. Don't need to do any of that stuff whatsoever. It will auto detect everything. And this works for any spec. So if you look, just decided to play a Demon Hunter Havoc, it will load everything. If it was Vengeance, if it was DK, if it was Druid or Feral or anything like that, it will automatically go, you can see we've got a load option here in Weak Auras, and you can see this one is set to a Druid playing Feral, and it will just detect it completely on its own. You don't need to do anything. So if, you can see here, there's a huge amount of Weak Auras here, but none of them are loaded. It's not going to chew your PC up or anything like that. They're not loaded. So we can minimize that. In fact, all that's loaded is this stuff. So we have the Warlock Affliction. Yeah. And we have a Soul Shard Timer, which was not made by me. I've left his name in there. Could full credit to him. He made it. I liked it. I've modified it even further than that uh, by doing one for the Rogue. I really like the style of it. So combo points, the old one I used to use no longer works. So I've made one for combo points of oh, combo points of use deeper stratagem uh i've made one for monks you can see they're all alphabetical okay so they start with the uh class name so it'd be mage all the mage stuff together then monk you can see i've done it for chi and things like that uh paladin's got one for holy power it's all the same thing i've just duplicated it and changed the colors to make it a little bit fancier so you can see there we've got a soul shard tracker which is nice and easy and it's loaded all the affliction stuff i said demonology didn't i uh, so I've included the why is this so much better? Well, one you can link this in chats. This has been hugely beneficial in beta And certainly will be to your friends is if they're making a new class and they're like oh I haven't even you know Like uh, let's give a simple example is your DK always plays unholy and you've asked him to tang He's like I haven't even got a a blood DK UI You can literally open the chat window and shift click blood and it will give him a blood DK UI in seconds right as long as he has weak auras it will literally send it to him straight away there's no reason to mess around this is the, also the same reason we didn't group everything by class we could have done that so it looked a lot less uh but instead we did them individually so it could be like oh you need a frost dk or maybe there's a certain part that you wanted right so maybe people wanted uh my dk frames Right, this is once I installed this, people want I linked this so many times in stream because people wanted this rune cooldown timer. Well, I can just go here. You go. This is what I did. As I opened the chat window, I was like, people whispered me or whatever. I was like, there it is. Okay, and that's it. You press enter, and it just sends it to them, and they can do they can do their thing with it. Uh, so this is all automatic. So what what else is automatic here? Uh, well, it's got things like lust and heroism. 
okay they're all lined up so they they all kind of work together if we show the whole thing uh you can see it kind of works together uh racials yeah so you can see if i uh show this again you can see i'm a gnome so it's shown me wing clip here and that will work for any racial in the game you can see all the racials are listed if they're a dps cooldown like troll uh, it will give you a timer that goes along bloodlust uh, in order to mi mirror that okay uh things along those lines so they're all mirrored and working well uh other things that i've added into this uh, one is the combat res timer so you know when you're in a raid or whatever and you're like how long until we can combat res do we have a combat res you know them questions that you guys asked and you see asked all the time well this is going to be here it just shows you that and it'll have a stack number and a cooldown and things like that. So you can say, well, we haven't got a combat res. Or, or we have three combat reses available. Things like that. Uh, this one here, although it looks kind of big, isn't in-game. Don't worry. This is just the style of group it is. Uh, but this tech detects whether the enemy you're fighting has buffed themselves with magic. So really useful. You're going to be doing a lot of new dungeons in BFA. You're probably not completely clear on what the enemies are doing. And you might notice this pop up and it's like oh my god this guy's buffed himself with something can we purge it can we dispel it or can we just be aware that that has happened there's also one for enrage but enrage is a little ropey like on how it detects it so it detects most enrages but not all of them which is a bit of a bummer um there's another one here for global trinkets you can see it detects my trinkets down here now this character hasn't got any trinkets so let's re-log actually at the, at the same time uh, but I hope you can clearly see why this is beneficial because one, you don't have any further setup than this in order to get your characters up and running, uh, right? It'll just do it automatically. No matter what you play, it'll just go, oh, I see what you're doing. You're playing a Warlock and you're playing the spec. Uh, that means I can just simply give you all the information. You don't need to go around and mess around with it and configure it and do anything like that. Let's log my mage. And you can see what's going on in here. And here we go come on load for me come on take your time legion uh so you can see here if we go to just viewing everything that's open you can see it's picked up the trinkets i've got equipped and it'll do the countdowns for them now this just detects your trinket slots so you don't ever need to change this you can move it around if you want to that's entirely up to you and the whole point of this is if you want to pick out individual little pieces of the ui then you can simply pull that out and link it and paste it. And now we will be putting all the Wii Coras up on Wago.io. Uh, that'll be over the next few days because I guarantee you there is some error somewhere, right? There's some error somewhere. Uh, I apologize in advance, but as you can see, it's been a huge amount of stuff to make. I've made all of this individually besides the stuff I've pointed out to you. Um, but we can iterate on it so easily now because if someone finds a minor error or something in the Vengeance Demon Hunter stuff, uh, then they can simply mo fix it and they can send it back to me or I can find it myself and modify it and send and just say, okay, it's updated. And we can keep them updated and iterate on them as we're going forward. And that'll be so much easier than you guys waiting for me to do like a mass update of everything is we can just keep iterating on them over and over again and people could just literally link it to me like if you find some error somewhere and you're like this could be a little better or this isn't working quite right they could just link it to me in chat and be like oh, okay cool uh that works so some extra stuff i've included here which you may or may not want i think is the interesting thing here is what is this leveling stuff bar we are about to level in bfa uh so i've created this bar for myself again if you don't want this right click it delete children and group okay and it will get rid of all this stuff uh but this is the stuff i'll be using for leveling so it's got sky step potion it's got the banner of cooperation it's got gun shoes it's got goblin glider kits uh but it's also got things like you don't have a flask buff you don't have a food buff you don't have a room buff things like that so if i apply those uh buffs this all disappears and but it'll just keep a track of the things i'll be using for leveling uh so i know that hey they're coming back but i only want this for leveling so when I, once i'm done i'll be right clicking this and i'll be deleting it myself it's just a temporary thing that i thought i'd include for you guys because most of you will be leveling in bfa or at some point uh some other stuff i've included then is some little helpful hints and tips uh okay that i thought were pretty cool so we move this over here so like hunter survival is a relatively new spec so i've included a wildfire infusion helper uh this is a talent you can take as survival that changes the effects of your dragon fire grenade for those of you who haven't played it so that you do different things when you fire that grenade uh so for example one of the grenades once you once you throw the grenade it wants you to spam kill command this will just change the note on here very handy if you're getting used to it and you're like i'm not sure what the colors of the dragon fire grenade do 
uh, once it'll just tell you here as a little note. But if you don't want it, if we use the plus symbol here, you can see Hunter Survival. If I'd use the plus symbol, they're all lab I've labeled them as best I can. Uh, which is, you can see here, it's Wildfire Infusion Helper. Just delete it if you don't want it. That's that's like the best advantage I can give you. It's like, it's so easy to go in and say, I don't want this little piece. I, li I like this bit, I don't like this bit. And I can just get rid of it and it's all going to be fine and dandy. So this automatically swaps and stuff depending on your talents. It'll do it all for you. Um, I've included one of the biggest requested things that people see on my stream, which is the interrupt cooldown tracker. Uh, if you're pugging Mythic Plus, this thing is invaluable. It's one of the most utilized weak auras in the game. I did not make it. I've included the name there and the link made by Hazal. Uh, basically, it just detects if anybody in your group has used an interrupt and if their interrupt is on cooldown. Uh, this is, I mean, you can imagine Medivh or something in Karazhan to give you a more recent um, example is if you're pugging like a 15 or a 10 or whatever, and you see that people are all on cooldown and you need to interrupt, or you can foresee a problem coming, it's so handy. Same with Helia in, in Mar of Souls, is to be able to track this and keep it going uh, and make sure you know what's happening with interrupts. I've left the raid week or as in that I use. Now, in terms of Uldir, Uldir is still three weeks away. Um, so I'm going to be modifying the Uldir one at some point, but I'm, I'm kind of out of time, unfortunately. Um, they're still changing the raid, so I don't want to commit overly. But what I've done is for the old ear debuffs, okay, so when you get into the new raid, is I've made a weak order that shows you the debuff you have, but you probably in your first raids won't know what that debuff is. So what I've, had, I've done is include these little notes. Again, you can delete them if you want to. It's not a big deal to me. Uh, it's just something I think will help some people who aren't au fait with the dungeon journal haven't watched the fat boss videos things like that so if you get this debuff and you're like oh i've got this debuff i don't know what to do it just says it's moved to the wall or if you get this one of fetid devour it's like don't stand near people okay uh it's very very simple idea here is just to give some little notes while you get used to the new raid in order to understand what to do while you're learning right without tr we're trying to minimize mistakes uh, for as many people as possible. Again, I don't know who downloads my UI. I don't know who you are or what level of the game you play. So maybe this is helpful to you. Maybe it's just a hindrance. It's going to be a, a, a wide breadth of people. So you can modify it and do whatever you want along there. So I think that's it for the week horrors. I think that's everything you need to know. Like it, I've play tested it pretty heavily. Pretty heavily. Oh, this is an interesting one. Some people will like this. Some people won't. Or we'll modify it. Uh, if raid buffs are now a thing, as we well know. Uh, this up here detects if everybody in your group has your buff or, or if somebody in your group doesn't have your buff Okay, so it checks. It's like does everybody have fortitude if somebody doesn't have it It will pop this up and say somebody doesn't have fortitude. You need to rebuff um some people won't like that, especially if you do a lot of open world content where people are fanning around all the time and you don't want this thing to pop up. I get that, but if you if you don't like that, I would go into trigger. If you click on the thing, you can see it says fort buff dis, right? It's, it's so easily labeled, I think. Go into the trigger and you can change this bit here. It says unit group. So this is checking the group. You can change that to player so it'll just check yourself, right? Uh, if you want that to happen. So it's like just reminding you of it. I've put in a lot of little reminders for people that I find personally handy. Let me just show you a couple here. Uh, so for balance, for example, I've got a little notification here that says you're no farm. Uh, more than once. I've, I've raided on a, on a balance tree for a few times now. And I've buffed or I've done something and it's brought me out of Moonkin farm. And I haven't realized until we pulled the boss. Uh, so it actually tells me here like, hey, you're not in Moonkin farm. Uh, it just gives me this reminder like, oh, okay, I'm not in Moonkin farm. Uh, I should, you know, I should probably fix that. Same here. It's like if I've taken the talent where I use a water elemental as a frost mage, it comes up with this and says, summon a pet, dickhead. Uh, if I go to a hunter and I'm beast master, it says summon a pet. It's over here. It's like summon a pet. Uh, with the Warlocks, it's slightly different because they uh, mostly have a pet, but they can also sacrifice their pet. So I've made um, this one. Uh, if we go to here, you can see these have these. Uh, so they have the summon a pet one if they have the talents where they should be using a demon. But if they have Grimor of Sacrifice, it will actually pop up saying, hey, you should sacrifice a pet. And it's like, oh, you're missing the buff. So it won't tell you to summon a demon because you don't actually want a demon. That one won't, won't appear. What will appear instead is if you have that talent, it will say you need to sacrifice a pet. And then once you have that buff, it will disappear. Um, which I think is a very, very cool way of just having these tiny little reminders uh, of stupid st stuff that you need to be doing 
and you just forget about sometimes like you just like don't notice it and i mean the amount of people i've raided with even at a super high level who were like i forgot to sacrifice my pet you know i didn't have the sacrifice buff for that pull you know things like that simple things so you can see on this uh warlock i haven't got it so i'm going to go to lui profiles i'm going to change it to breach bfa and we're going to reload because this is this is why you reload i also want to do big wigs while i'm here slash big wigs uh profiles change it it's already set to breach nice and then reload and it should correct all my ui issues always worth doing a reload after you set these things just to make sure everybody's happy and we're all laughing there you go everything's fine and you can see here it says sacrifice a pet oh okay so i need to do that so i'm going to sacrifice a pet so there's my pet i'm going to kill it oh it's gone because i now have the sacrifice buff uh if i click that off it see it instantly reappears and says sacrifice a pet you dumbass but that's because I have Grimoire of Sacrifice. If I switch over to Grimoire of... Uh, oh, it's on cooldown. Would you believe it? Uh, but that's okay. And 10 seconds. If I switch over to a talent where I'm supposed to have a pet, I don't want to sacrifice a pet for this one. I actually want to have a pet like I do with Roaring Blaze. It's going to tell me a different message. It's going to say, hey, you need to get your pet out. Otherwise, you know, things are bad. You can see. Oh, you have that talent now. You should summon a pet. Yeah? It's all these little friendly reminders. I also put one up for... Um, where are we we take burning rush here uh the classic how many warlocks healers will know how many warlocks do you see just with burning rush on just stood afk well you can see it comes up <laughs> i'm saying you're burning by the way you're burning you should uh maybe turn that off sometimes right or you can just keep it on if you want to but it does come up with a little message saying you're burning you should keep things going but i think uh i think i've done as much as i can here in order to keep things nice and happy. You can see once you've got full soul shards or whatever, it brings this up and it tells you if you've got things like reverse entropy uh, or eradication on the target, which is very handy if you are if you're, if you care about your DPS. Oh, your immolate's running out. Okay, well, we can fix that. There we go. Uh, so it's simple things. I have done it so it takes pay, um, the timers on dots. Yeah, the timers on dots will generally line up with the uh, pandemic mechanic in the game. If you're not sure what that is, if you refresh a dot slightly early, it will add the time to it. So you're not wasting time by trying to wait to the very last second uh, in order to re-dot. So you can see here, it's, it's like, oh, you've specced into Siphon Life. Awesome. Okay, you should put Siphon Life up. Uh, oh, that target hasn't got them. You know what I mean? So when you click these targets, it will tell you these are the dots that are missing. And then if we come back to this target, uh, it will say, hey, three seconds, four seconds till corruption wears off. And same with Agony and same with Siphon Life. And then it keeps the UI very clean. That's always my UI, um, aim with these types of add-ons is they look very busy at first. I'm not going to deny that. They look very busy at first. But once you're actually in combat, they disappear. If they're not relevant to you, they disappear and, and you never have to worry about them again. So this probably looks very busy to a lot of people. But once you're actually in combat and you're using these abilities, most of this stuff just vanishes uh, and you never see it again, which I think is the way it should be. So you keep your UI as clean as possible. It looks busy at first, but it's actually not. Uh, a couple of extra ones then is this one. Uh, this I actually thought I was going to hate this week aura. It was given to me by Loz from Fat Boss, and it was kind of like everybody needs this. And it, all it does is if you've been marked by a skull or a triangle or a circle or whatever, it just comes up in a big icon and says, you are this mark. And I was like, that's fucking really dumb, man. Why the hell would I need that? It's pretty clear if my character's got a big mark over his head. I found it invaluable in quite a number of scenarios to the point where I'm like really happy to keep this. I thought it was going to be a week or I would have uh, because we were doing something on Varimathras, which involved the colors um, and would delete straight away. But I've actually ended up keeping it because it's... It's really useful, uh, but I could definitely see some people who are certainly in the pug world where people mark people randomly for no fucking reason that it could get really tedious. And if, if so, that's the case, just delete it if that's your problem. But if you're a raider, I would really encourage you to get this. Uh, just you use this and just see how useful it is because it actually pops up so often and you're like, oh shit, I actually need to do something with this. Um, it really just helps out for some uh, inexplicable reason. I actually found it super useful to have this. Despite the fact it's incredibly obvious on my character, I'm not denying that. I found it really invaluable in a number of scenarios. Uh, I didn't think I ever would, but there you go. Um, other than that, I think we're good. Now, what is the drawback here? Um, one bigger other oh, the second biggest change i've made to this ui is the removal of grid and unit frames why have we done that well 
there are a number of debuffs and abilities that bosses and stuff are using. I always design my UIs with PvE in mind uh, that no longer show up on unit frame add-ons and you have to add them in manually. Most people don't know how to do that. It's not particularly difficult, but it's just, some people don't even know they need to. That's the problem. Uh, it's not Even if they knew how to do it, they might not know they need to until it's too late and you can't see these problems. Uh, a good example would be Sisters of the Moon and their Eclipse ability uh, didn't show up on standard unit frames. However, Blizzard's standard unit frames, they design the bosses, so they obviously always work, and they will work until the end of time. Not only that, they've changed how you sort out your unit frames for the Blizzard standard UI, and they look almost identical to what you can get from a lot of unit frame add-ons. Sure, they lack some customization in terms of like your buffs and hots and things like that, but overall, they're actually really good. Uh, so I've decided uh, to use Blizzard standard unit frames. Now, how do you do that? First thing to do is to check this. If you go to LVI, click on unit frames, click on disable Blizzard unit frames. It's actually happened here. This is good. The profile I've sent you should have these disabled. Uh, we sent this out to like six people. Five people had this disabled. One person didn't, and it's actually happened to me here. You actually want to de-tick party frames, or untick, is the phrase, isn't it? Untick. Untick party frames and untick the raid frames. If you don't do this, Blizzard standard um, LVY, unit frames, disable Blizzard unit frames, raid frames, accept. Um, if you don't do this, the standard Blizzard unit frames will not appear because that's the disabler. That in LVI is what turns them off. So you want to turn them back on. Uh, then what you'll do is go to interface and raid profiles. And here you have all these choices of things to do. And it's actually totally fine. So this is how I do it generally. If you just want a quick setup is use raid style party frames. And I, I have, you can set profiles here. You can see you can make your own profiles. Now, again, unfortunately, there are some drawbacks to this. It doesn't save cross character. I have no fucking idea why. It drives me crazy. Uh, but I have, I have three. I have dungeon, which is like dungeon and open world and then i have healer because my healer unit frames are slightly different again and then i have raid and the reason i have three different profiles is because if i'm in a dungeon uh, i have them very close to my unit frames here because there's only five people and i want them very close i don't if they're over here if i'm soul stoning somebody or keeping an eye on if someone's dead it's very much easier to put them here if i'm healing i have them here uh, because it makes my mouse and attention on the center of my screen because I want to heal and I also want to see what's happening with my character. If I'm in a raid though, I want them over here and out the way because in most cases, uh, if I'm not healing, it's not really much I can do here. And if it's a soul stone or a resurrection situation, you have time to sort of set it up here but while simultaneously keeping it out of the way. Uh, so what you then do is say, well, I want to use the raid profiles in a 25 player group, right? or a 15 player group or a 40 player group and then you could do things like do i want to see power bars do i want to see mana energy and things sure okay if i'm tanking sure i want to see the mana on my healer do i want to see incoming heals not really do i want class colors yes makes things much easier do i want to see pets do i want to see the display main tank and assist not really do i want the horrible fucking disgusting border that blizzard puts on the frames no i don't uh do i want to see debuffs yeah i do and then you can modify them here. Now, for some god-awful reason, Blizzard chose not to include numbers here, so you can't make them super identical very easily, but I know you guys will do that. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, listen to this. This is a massive pain in the ass, Mike. Why don't you just make grid or whatever in order to just set a profile and it's so easily done? Because this does take about five minutes, and it will work for the rest of time. It's a pain in the ass for sure. I'm, I'm telling you now, it's a pain in the ass to get started with, but it will last you forever once it's done, right? So it will last you forever. So again, if I wanted to do the dungeon one, save that one. Yep, dungeon. I want to use this in a five, two, three, and five player group, right? And I want it to be the same sort of thing. So this is the advantage that I have by using this system. Uh, so I think it works well for what it is. It takes. It does take five minutes. I wish I could just say, here's a unit frame, right click it, but that presents problems throughout the game which then means you're going to have to go in and configure that individually and do things like that. Whereas this has actually got different advantages to it. It's just an initial pain in the backside to actually set up. Uh, along that note then, 
One last thing to remind people of who are using my UI for the first time is if you are a healer, I, as I just mentioned, I have a slightly different setup. So if we go to a, a monk and we choose Miss Weaver, we use something called spec specific profiles. Okay. As I said, when I'm healing, I want my attention to be in the middle of the screen. That means things have to change a little bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is go into all UI. Got to go to profiles. And we're going to say, okay, for Brewmaster, we want this one. For Windwalker, we want to use this one. Okay. But we can see we've selected the box enable spec specific pro enable spec profiles. That means I can choose different profiles for different specs. So for Mist Weaver, I'm actually going to use Healer BFA. Uh, now, what does that do? So this is a standard setup we would go with. But what if I switch over to Mist Weaver now? You're going to see that this whole thing is going to switch around and change. Take a second. Bump. There we go. Okay. Give it a reload to make sure it's all working. As always, when you're messing around with UI, please just reload your UI. It's, it causes, it fixes like so many of your problems. Now, as you can see, my targets and stuff are actually down below. Uh, and my spells are up here. And that's because I don't need to see them right i don't need to see these things and this is when i would have my unit frames in the middle here i had this is why i have them set up for a healer uh, and i find it very useful so i track the cooldowns and stuff because like, we're healing we don't need to see the cooldown on soothing mist or whatever because the cooldown is based entirely on whether or not i have mana so we have the mana tracker and anything that does have a cooldown that's relevant then i have that tracked here right so you can see as usual it all disappears if you're using it no big deal. If we want to life cocoon somebody, it all disappears. If we want to use a fort brew, it'll disappear and do stuff like that. So for healers, I, I use this healer BFA profile. And that's the only other thing I think I need to be aware of. So again, I do apologize for taking unit frames out for ease of use. But there are, there are a lot of more technical benefits to it. Rather than the initial pain in the ass of actually setting up your little boxes. I mean, it's literally a case of watch. This is how I would do it. Raid profiles. Use raid profiles. Uh, cool. cool. Uh, and I want to see power bars. I grow. You can see it's still it's saved where I was anyway. And I want them to be about this big. And that's it. It's done. Like, I don't even need to mess around on this one. It's already sorted. Um, that's how quickly you can do it. If I wanted to do it from scratch, I think we should probably do it from scratch. Shall we? So if I... I've, because you've done, I've done it all already. Uh, I would go healer. I want them displayed by group. I don't want that. I want power bars. I want class colors. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I want to use it in this scenario. That's it. It's that quick. It seems a pain in the ass while you're practicing and messing around with it. But as long as you generally know what you're looking for, uh, it's real easy because it's just repetition. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the UI. Bye-bye.